Um, all right, this is part two to our video. I want to thank you all for tuning in to Rodriguez Jackson TV. Yeah, stick the name again like we did before. And yeah, this is Nana Poku, our film director. And today is our uh, part two interview. So I'm glad to be here, Rod. All right, <clears throat> first question. Are you familiar with the latest filmmaking technology? Yes, I am. Um, something like um, um, After Effect. There's a lot of technology, uh, some kind of like uh, virtual realities. So there's a whole lot of uh, a new technology. And also uh, the, the cameras, there's a new uh, technology, uh, there's a new technology uh, on the cameras so like uh, D, 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 uh, LR, you know. So all these are new technology that evolve in the production or filmmaking. You know, the technology evolve these days and uh, I'm aware of them and sometimes I use them. Yeah, I heard this can be a, you know, important skill important <clears throat> you know what I'm saying skill for uh, film directors oh yeah to be familiar with the technology yeah you have to because you know even even the software um you have to make sure that you have the latest one you know we have davinci code uh, we have um a premiere pro and you have to make sure that you have the latest version and i have all of them you know when it comes to production yeah Wow, see that's something I learned <laughs> from oh, yeah. you. Oh yes, you can learn nothing about that stuff. So I could go back and watch the video a million times and uh, oh, yeah. learn from it. Yeah, it's very important to be uh, upgraded, you know, because you cannot be on the old technology. You know, the new ones, the new ones, some the new one make your job more easy. You know, yeah. So you have to do with the new technology. It's more important to get yourself familiar with it. Even the cameras, the softwares. Yeah, all important. Okay. So, uh, what are some of your favorite movies and why? Well, um, some of the movies uh, that that that, that uh, I like uh, uh, right now, uh, some of some of them that uh, we talk about the other day, like um, even the Eddie Murphy uh, recently released this movie uh, coming to. America Part Two, you know, I really like that movie because uh, the way the way he did it was very very nice and surprise. You know, the way he he portrayed the African like uh, he was there, and you know, so the way the way he created the story. So I really like uh, Coming to America Part Two. When it came out, when I watched the movie, I said, Wow, he he, he really nailed it. He did it very well. Yeah, did it very well than the part part one, and uh, that's very interesting. So why do you like part two uh, better than part one over some? You know? Yeah, like I said, um, part two was the continuity of the part one, you know, but uh, the part one was that time um, uh, a lot of things were not available for him, you know, like these days, you know. Uh, especially the location, you know, the location wise. If you look at where, uh, which the, the mansion that he should, you know, film, film is about when we they talk about real estate, like location, location, location. Film too is also important, you know, the location. What kind of message you want to convey to the people, and the location helps you to tell the story more better. So the reason why I like it, this this uh, part two, the location that he shoot the movie. Even later, I was finding out where is the location, and I found out where it is and everything. You know, it was amazing, you know, especially the location. That's why I like the film. How it was, the, the, the mansion where he did it as a, he lived there with his, his his family as a as a prince. You know, it was very nice than the first one. You know, yeah. Okay. So how would you describe your directing style? Okay, <clears throat> if, if we talk about directing and you don't talk about. Uh, Steve Spielberg. That means it's like uh, uh, you, you, you leave something behind. Okay, my directing style is like uh, uh, Steven Spielberg, you know, because um, he's the father of directing. So if anyone, when it comes to directing, if anyone that I have to learn from him, or have to listen to him, have to adopt his style, that is uh, Spielberg. Because if you look at the, the uh, this this movie, the Jurassic Park. 
and then the the the, the, the Chirac. You know, he has so many movies, and his his directing style is amazing. And the way he did it, if you look at the Jurassic the Jurassic Park, that time the technology was not even like today, but how he did that movie, you know, like the dinosaurs and human beings are running together, you know. I mean, his style of uh, directing is amazing. When we talk about movie directing, we talk about Steve Spielberg. So if it's anybody that I want to learn his style, I want to imitate him, I want to follow his full step, going to be uh, Steven Spielberg. Is he the one that did Avatar? Yeah. yeah. Oh, man, I love yeah. that movie. Yeah, that's My what I said. You know, yeah, he, by him. Yeah. And, and, uh, and then also uh, Robert, you know, I mean. There were so many movies that uh, he, he bring uh, some virtual to the reality and bring them together and blended them, you know. So he's very good in directing movies. Because yeah, I love Avatar. It's like yeah. my favorite. Mm -hmm. uh, doing a part two. Yeah. And we've been waiting, uh, I don't know, seven, eight years, nine years for part yeah. two. But yeah. uh, I look forward to seeing that. That's what I'm talking about. He's very good. Yeah. He's a good director. Well, if you anything like him, you're gonna be a billionaire. I'm telling you. I hope. I, I hope. You know. You know. We are all dream big. You know. And I hope it will come true. If I can do something like him, you know, that would be a big project for me. But I hope. You know. Yeah, it's soon yeah. come to pass. I know. What is your experience with working with actors? Well, um, uh, actors is act actors are storytellers. You know. So um, I, I like working with them, you know. Like I said, uh, they, they are storytellers. Uh, I like. I have a very good experience, especially when they are telling the story, and we as a director, we use the camera to follow them to bring the story alive, you know. So actors are storytellers, and they bring somebody's life into reality, you know. So my experience with actors, I can say, is very positive and it's a very good manner, you know. And uh, especially, I like also learning from other people and each one have their own style, have their own way of doing things, you know. Yeah, it's, it's, it's nice uh, to, to work with actors, you know. Nice. Uh, provide an example of um, a time when you had to manage a difficult production issue okay um production is always most of the problem might come from location okay if you secure a location and they, they agree with you and the end of the time the almost the time and it didn't come on you didn't get that location it's also a difficult thing one time we want to shoot uh, a scene at a um, at a restaurant, I talked to the lady and she agreed and I didn't know that they don't open on Sunday You know, so when I I scheduled it on Sunday I thought that oh, that was a good time and then I talked to her and he said, oh, I don't open on Sunday So when it come like that you have to look for another location You know and then it become difficult for you and the second thing is uh, no show off no call or call at the last end if you have an actor that a uh, lot of project based on him or her and you expect him to come on the set in a certain time you know because involve other people and uh, at the at the last minute he or she call you and say i cannot make it that thing to say is a very big problem you know that sometimes you need to do deal with this these are the problems sometimes the directors will come the to face it and then you, you really need to fix it sometimes you have to find someone to replace him or her immediately you know other than that the project cannot continue or go on that day and you're on schedule you have to schedule a lot of people have come on the set so whatever you have to do to push it so these are some of the problems sometimes we have have you so you have got rid of people who done this before or have you okay me if you do that it's hardly for me to bring you back to the set you know you see, we all human beings. If, if you are not coming, and then you you tell me in advance, because sometimes uh, we interview people. If you wanna bring, if you do a cast, you know you do more than what you need. So if the person tell you ahead of time, you can contact the second person, you know. But if he wait till the last end or the same day and said I, I can't make it, that person, it, it's hard for me. Maybe you might not come in. On my on my on my set anymore you know yeah 
but uh, people that come to the set i don't sack them like oh you are not good or something because before i bring someone on the set i interview the person we talk and i'll explain what he coming to do you know so i ask him Would you think you'll be able to do it if you need any help i'll be able to help you so when they come to the set um i don't have those issues with such things you know yeah i always trying to uh, when the person come, then I know that he has devoted his time. So whatever it take for me to work with him or her, I'll do it, you know, and uh, just uh, keep the, the project moving. Okay. If you were given a $10 million budget, what would your idea film project be? Well, um, that, that's an interesting question. Yeah. If, if I have such a budget, um, I would do... Yeah, I, I would do a blockbuster movie, you know, because such a budget is a big money. You cannot do it in a small future films, you know, because uh, film, we have executive producers that people that contribute the money for it. And some of them too are investors, you know, and they are looking at the return of their money. So, but a good film doesn't involve a big money, but at least you have, if, if they have allocated 10 million for you to do a movie, then you have to know that this is a big commercial movie, you know. So you have to find a professional um, actors and and bring it uh, as a blockbuster movie, you know. Yeah, that's if if I have such a budget, that's what I'm planning. It's not going to be a little future film, you know. It has to be a commercialized, very big uh, project, you know. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> How well do you handle stress on the set? Well. Um, movie is uh is, is sometimes it get a little difficult you know but you, you have to prepare you know you have to prepare yourself you know and especially those who have experience they know it you know sometimes um, it can take more than what we plan for you know so to me i, I prepare myself you know because life is not going to be easy all the time okay Sometimes we planning like, oh, we're going to do about three, a tree shoot for a scene. And when you're lucky, you get one or two and it's better. You don't need to do it again. And sometimes too, you do a scene and you, you, you don't get it right. And you have to keep on doing until you get the right scene, you know. So by me, I always prepare myself that, uh, you know, you have to be tough inside if you're doing something or if you want to win, you know. It's not something that you take it lightly or... Oh, if uh, I'm going to finish one hour, but if I couldn't finish, I'll give up. No, sometimes you, it can be late. Sometimes, especially when you're shooting a different location. This, uh, the recent movie that we did, we shoot uh, in a different location. We have to drive about 45 minutes or 30 to 45 minutes to go to the second location. And we finish late, you know. All these things you have to prepare, you know. But uh, we know that we're going to go to the uh, different location, but we didn't know it's going to take some time like that, you know. So stressful is part of life, you know. Nothing is going to be easy. If you want to be successful, this is stressful. It's part of that. You have to know how to manage it, you know. And you have to be patient. And uh, you have to be consistent what you're doing. And you have to be make your mind that it's not going to be easy every day. Today you might get it easy. But that doesn't mean that it's going to be every day or all the time, you know. So by being prepared yourself, you always can be able to manage stress situation. Okay. <clears throat> Do you have any experience with working with large crews? Right now, not yet. I've been, for me, to uh, go and help, but I haven't, like, my, my project is now still some kind of, like, a medium, small, you know. But large crew, I've get involved, like, uh, helping, but not my own budget, like, I'm doing a... Uh, big uh, crew at this time but i hope in the in the near future it's okay and i hope it's gonna come very soon because that's my end game to have a big uh a, a big a, a big film you know yeah when is it appropriate to ask an actor to redo a take what is the question again honey? i said when is it appropriate to ask an actor to mm -hmm. redo a take or oh, to redo okay yes the thing is, 
okay when, when you have a scene in mind or you have on a paper you have to make sure that you get it right you know as a especially as a director you know you don't let um outside influence push you to do something or get something that you think is not right but when you get it right you can feel it you can see when you see that you see, if it's not right sometimes you can do it three times or four times it doesn't matter how it take until you get it right you know yeah okay <clears throat> we want to create a unique visual style for our film how would you approach this okay film right now we have a lot of technologies some some of them can be done through a software you know some of them can be done through this uh, reality uh, platforms you know so um and a film the, the, the visual is very important because you know you are telling a story through camera or you are telling a story through photo you know so um visualization is very important and now we have a lot of uh, technology some of them are softwares that we use it you know to do a certain things like if a car crash or something you know they do things or if somebody is burning you know all these things are done through sometimes done through the software you know sometimes we set the scene and then we know that from here the software will take place or after effect you know you incorporated them to it you know so right now the, the virtual reality is more important also in filmmaking it's now it's a part of it you know yeah it, it's even when it comes to this animation they are all in uh, virtual reality you know but now we have even incorporated to uh the, the, the human one that we do physically you know so now uh the, the virtual uh technology is more important in filmmaking you know yeah. okay describe your process for preparing for a day of shooting okay the morning that if we're going to do uh shooting today the morning i have to contact all the crew members you know because the fact that i have appointment with them and say okay you're going to be there one o'clock you know anything can happen but you don't want to go to the set where half of your people are not there so in the morning i'll contact each of them sometimes by text texting you hey you know uh you're going to be there four o'clock or you're going to be there three o'clock you know and then all of them reply you these are the first people you know that okay they are all coming you know and then the second is you have to set up the equipment before they comes you don't want them to, because I mean, everything, you know, time is very essence, you know. So you want to prepare before they come to the set. You have set up the camera, the light, all the things that you need. And then you also have prepared some food for them in advance. Either you have ordered the time that the food going to come. So you have to do all this preparation to support them, you know. It's not that uh, you, you, you say, okay, we're going to do the shoot on Friday and the morning you don't contact anybody. You don't do any preparation. Oh, they are coming on. No. So all these are part of my preparation for the day. You know, contact them in the morning and then uh, set up the equipment before they come and then make sure that uh, I have the food. After we finish, we have to eat, you know, and, war and make sure that all these uh, amenities are available for them. So these are the preparation as a good uh, director, you know. Okay. What makes you stand out from other directors? Like... I Everybody gonna say I'm good at it, but the other people is gonna prove, you know. If you if if you have a repeat customers, that means what you're doing is good, you know. I've been working with some uh, actors and actresses, and anytime I call them, they come, you know. And sometimes, let's say if my project crash with some people, they say, oh, uh, I have a problem. But later on, they will call me and say, hey, I'll I'll make on your on on yours, you know. So when they choose you, then you know that you're doing good, you know, or you're doing better than the others, you know. But I cannot uh, say myself like I'm good, but when you have to repeat people that come to work with you all the time, that shows that you're good at what you're doing or they like, uh, they, they really like working with you. So these are the things that I can measure to see that when people come to me uh, repeatedly or continuously, then I can know that, okay, they really like me or they find my style of directing is not something that they say oh my god i wish it's, it's, it's over now 
you know, and I won't come there again, you know. <laughs> but when we finish, we are all happy, you know, and we enjoy. And sometimes they even come and say, hey, where is the next film coming on, you know? <laughs> yeah, so this gives me confidence for me to know that they really like working with me, you know. Okay. Yeah. Okay, in closing, um, um, can you let the people know the name of your new film again? Okay, the, the, the new film that I just released is No Money, No Love. It's a very uh, life story, you know. So if you want to check it out, I'm, right now it's on YouTube. And our channel is Media Center TV. So you go to YouTube, you type Media Center TV, you add one of my movie titles like No Money, No Love, or Love Affair, or Valentine Day Date, or Memorial Day Date, you know, it's called YouTube is a who. So you first type my uh, TV name, Media Center TV, you add one of my movie titles. That's where you can find me. No money, no love. That is the latest one. So you can find and enjoy. When you go there, I want you to watch it. And also supporting us. I want you to subscribe to all the wonderful work we are doing. They show appreciation by subscribing to the channel. Let us know that you are enjoying what you're doing. And anytime we release something new, we will send it to you. Or you get an early access for it to watch it. And I'll also put the link in the comments. So please let the people know your name yeah. uh, before you leave Rodriguez Jackson TV. Yeah, I'm Nanopoku, movie director. Sometimes too, I act and I'm also a producer. You know, I wear so many hats. So <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm giving a big shout out to all my fans. This is your main man, Nanopoku, a movie director, producer. And, uh, you know, so hey, peace and love. I love all of you and uh, I hope to see you again very soon. All right, and I want to thank you all for tuning in to Rodriguez Jackson TV. Hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and uh, hit the bell icon to receive all notifications. Thank you.